Hi everyone and welcome to the Stitch Sessions and welcome to a Stitch Tutorial this week. I'm very excited to show you all how to create this diamond shaped stitch which I also call the honeycomb stitch. So I've seen it called the honeycomb stitch but I've also seen it referred to as the diamond stitch. Now I created a blanket using this uh, stitch and so to me, I used it more horizontally this way. So to me, the diamonds look much more like a honeycomb. But if you turn them this way, you can definitely see how it would be more predominantly a diamond shape. Now, this is a an eight row repeat. It's actually a seven row repeat, but you can make it an eight row repeat by using extra an extra row for the divisions here. It sounds daunting, I know, but really, once you get the first two sections done, which is the eight rows, you'll fall into the groove of doing it very, very quickly, and you'll see that it's actually quite easy. So we are going to be able to practice all of our basic crochet stitches. So basically, everything from the single crochet, half double, the double crochets, and the triple crochets. If you've never done a triple crochet before, do not fret. It's actually very easy, and I just take you through it nice and slowly. You'll also be doing something called a spike stitch, which gives you this really cool effect where the color dips down like that. Now, uh, just letting you in on a little secret, it's actually just an elongated single crochet stitch. So again, seems intimidating, but it's actually pretty easy. If you're a beginner, I firmly believe you will be able to do this um, stitch. So uh, of course, this is in a blanket tutorial. And uh, if you've, you, many of you might have already seen this tutorial because it came out just between Christmas and New Year's. It's called the Movie Night Blanket, and it's perfect for snuggling up on the couch watching a movie, but creating the project is also a great movie night project because it's one of those projects that once you get in the groove, you can just watch a program or a movie and you'll be okay doing it. You don't actually have to count. Like once you establish the first chunk, you don't have to count stitches anymore. You're just gonna follow the rhythm of where to place your singles, half doubles, doubles, and triples, and then you go back down. So. It's a really fun stitch. You can do all kinds of things with this. So I happen to have made a blanket out of mine, but uh, you'll have to let me know once you get the hang of your diamond stitch what you're going to be inspired to make. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's learn how to stitch up the honeycomb slash diamond stitch. Okay, so for this stitch tutorial, uh, I'm just going to be using some medium four weight yarn, and I've got the Bernat Premium Yarn. This is the color teal. I'm going to be using this for my main color. And then this is also Bernat Premium, and it is the color Aqua Baby or Baby Aqua, something like that. So I'm going to use these two colors to kind of show you how the contrast works. You really do need two colors for this particular stitch uh, because the color contrast makes this stitch what it is. So, uh, and then for the hook, I'm gonna be using a six millimeter hook, which is also known as a J or a size 10. And anytime you're working on a project, make sure you have a pair of scissors and a yarn needle on hand to sew in any of your ends. So let's begin. Okay, so we're going to begin with our accent color. Okay, so for me, that's my baby aqua. Now this stitch is done in multiples of 12. So it's quite a long stretch. So that means however long you wanna create your project or however wide, you're gonna stitch up sets of 12. So you'll stitch 12, then 12, then 12, then 12, until you get the length that you desire. Once you get the length that you desire in multiples of 12, you will then stitch an additional one stitch, okay? Now I'm gonna be just doing a sample for this tutorial. So I'm going to do uh, four sets of 12, which is gonna give me 48, and then I'm gonna add one more. So I'm gonna start off with 49 stitches. So we're gonna begin with a slip knot on our hook. And I'm gonna go ahead up and stitch up 49 chains. 
Okay, so I have my 49 chains and I made sure to make them nice and even so we didn't want to have them squished or twisted or anything like that. Once you have your desired length in your chain, you want to now find the second chain from your hook. Remember, we never count the loop that's on the hook. We're gonna go one, two, and into that second chain, we're gonna place a single crochet. Now, I'm just gonna work into the back bumps for this tutorial, but if you find that finicky, you can definitely go right in through the front of your stitch. So all we're gonna do for this first row is we're just gonna place one single crochet into each and every single chain. Okay, so I am finished my first row, and this is the point where you wanna make sure you have the right number of stitches. So you wanna have your multiple of 12. So for me, I have 48 for my sample, Okay, so this is the number of stitches that you're going to continue to maintain for the course of your project, however long you make your length. Now, row number one is complete and we are now done using our accent color for now. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna snip my yarn here and I'm gonna fasten off, just nice and easy there. And now I'm gonna take my main color and I'm gonna bring that in. Okay, so this is gonna be my teal. And so what we wanna do is, I always like to start where I ended, so I'm gonna just turn my work here. Now, if you're more comfortable starting with a slip knot, again, go ahead and do that. When I'm doing certain projects, I don't like to use the knot because I find there's a lot of knots in the same spot. So I am going to firstly, insert my hook into the last stitch I've completed right there okay and then I'm just going to place my main color onto my hook and just pull it through the stitch just like that okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain up four so we have one two three four Okay, this chain four will count as a triple crochet. So we're gonna be using some triple crochets in here as well. And I always try if I can to work over my tails. If that confuses you, just push your tails aside. You can sew them in at the end. Okay, so we're gonna begin with a partial diamond shape to start. So into the next two stitches, we are gonna place a double crochet stitch. So I'm just gonna insert my hook again I'm going to try and work over those tails and place a double crochet okay and another double crochet into the next stitch just like that okay don't worry that this one's bunching in a little bit. That will all sort itself out in subsequent rows. So into the next stitch, we're gonna place a half double crochet stitch. So you'll still yarn over, find your next stitch, and you will half double crochet. And then into the next stitch, we will place a single crochet. So you're gonna insert your hook, and place a single crochet. Okay, so you can see we're starting to decrease in the length of our stitches. So you have a triple, two doubles, a half double, and a single, okay? So now what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna push those tails back, is we're going to chain two, one and two. Then we will skip the next two stitches and into the following stitch, we will single crochet. So we just finished decreasing the height of our stitches. And so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna increase the height of our stitches, see that? So into the next stitch, we are gonna do a half double crochet. And then into the next two stitches, we are gonna place a double crochet. So there's one. 
And then into the next one, we're gonna place another double crochet. So you can see there, the height is starting to increase again. Now into the next two, we are gonna place two triple crochets. So we're gonna yarn over twice. So if you're new to doing triple crochets, do not fret. We're gonna go through it slowly here. So you'll insert your hook into the stitch. After you've yarned over twice, you're gonna pull up a, a loop and you'll have four loops on your hook. So then you'll yarn over and only pull through the first two. That'll leave you with three hooks, three hooks. That'll leave you with three loops. Then you yarn over, pull through the next two, and then yarn over and pull through the final two. And there you have your triple crochet. Look at how tall that gets, see? We go from single to triple. We're gonna do one more of these. So you're gonna yarn over twice into the next stitch, insert, and then pull through two and pull through two and another two. So now we finished increasing in height. Now we've got to decrease. So this is actually what we started with. You see, we started with this back end here. So into the next two, we are going to go back to doing double crochets. One, and then there's the second one. And then we've got a half double crochet into the next one. And we've got a single crochet into the next one. So we've gone up and we've come down. So we've got 10 stitches here of our 12. And then we always chain two, one and two. So this is the full set of 12 stitches. Remember we said they're done in multiples of 12. So this is the full set of 12. So we started off with our first half here. So we've got 10 main stitches. And so we started off with our first five here. And of course there's the chain two. So here now we have the full set of 12. So this is what we're gonna keep repeating throughout the row. So depending on the length of your project, you would keep doing this until you have a total of seven stitches remaining. And actually, once you do your chain two, because we won't count that those are gonna be two skip stitches, you're gonna have five stitches remaining. Once you are done there, I will meet up with you again to take you through the second half. I'm just gonna quickly get you started again here. So you would, once you've chained two, you will skip two stitches and then into the next stitch, you begin increasing in height again. So we start with a single, we then go to a half double, whoops, all the way. Then we do two doubles, one and two. And then we do two triples. So there's one, and there's two. Okay, and then we start decreasing. Two doubles again. One, two, and then a half double and then a single, and we chain two. Okay, so there you can see that. So go ahead and do that. I'll meet up with you when you've got those five stitches left, okay? And then we'll talk about going on to row number two. Okay, so I've come to the end of row number two, and I have five stitches left after the two skips. So technically you're gonna have seven stitches available, but remember we chain two and we're always going to skip those two. So you skip the next two stitches and into the next stitch, we start again with a single crochet, okay? And then we build back up. We go half double And then two doubles, so we've got one, and then we have a second one, 
and then into the very last stitch, which is that extra chain that we did to turn our work, we're gonna place a triple crochet. And this brings us to the end of row number two, and it finishes that first half. So see, we've got half of a diamond here, we've got half of a diamond there. So basically my row right now, I'm just gonna bring this in so you guys can see it, is being flanked by two halves of this pattern. Okay, just like that. And so there you have it. There's row number two complete. You're now starting to see the shape being formed. Now, there's two more rows to go before you can actually start doing a repeat. So let's go on to row number three. So for row number three, you would begin by chaining four again. One, two, three, four and you'll turn your work. Now I find row number three the easiest, well, almost the easiest row. There is a, another row that's easy as well, but this one's really easy because now you've got a shape already formed for you. All you're gonna do is replicate what you see. So this is my chain four, that counts as a triple crochet, which is the one that's beneath me here. Now into the next two stitches, I have two double crochets, so I'm just gonna place a double crochet. So I'm just gonna follow what I see. Okay, so you've got a double crochet, and then we've got another double crochet, just like that, okay? And now I've got a half double crochet, so I place a half double crochet. The next one is a single crochet, so I place a single crochet. See what I mean by it's easy? Because you just follow what you see. So. What we're doing is we're really accentuating that diamond shape by mirroring what we're seeing here. So next we chain two, so we chain two and we skip over those two chains and into the next stitch we have a single, so we place a single crochet. The next one is a half double, so we place a half double. Okay, so you can see now that that half of a diamond really is accentuated with that next row. So then we've got two doubles, one and two. And then we have our two triples. So we yarn over twice and we triple on top of a triple. And then we've got another triple right there. So we triple over that. And then we go back down, we have two doubles, so we insert one and two. And then we have a half double. And then we have a single. And then we see that chain two, so we chain two as well. So you can see, and it's gonna bubble a little bit, that's totally normal, it's nothing that blocking won't fix and or subsequent rows. So now you can really, see how I, I can see it's more like honeycomb because it's not like really severely a diamond. But now you can really see it's, the shape is established with row number three. So that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna replicate all the stitches you see with exactly the same ones and you're gonna do that right to the end of your row. I've got to weave in these tails here. And the last stitch, remember it's that chain four, you're gonna place your triple crochet in the top of that chain four, okay? Once you're done that, row number three is complete, and then I'm gonna meet up with you and take you on to row number four. Okay, so I'm just coming up to that last stitch here, which is the top of the chain four. So I'm just going to insert my hook and triple crochet. Okay, and row number three is complete. So you've got something that looks like this. Isn't that cool? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, I'm actually just going to snip my yarn here and fasten off, just like that. Okay, and so row number three is done. So we're gonna go into row number four now and we're gonna bring back our accent color. 
So what I like to do is I'm going to turn my work and again I'm going to insert where I finished and I'm going to pull through the new color. Okay, so I've got that right there and I'll throw that over and I'm going to chain one and that traps that in there. And as usual, I like to work over my tails. If you like to do yours at the end, you can weave them in at the end. So what we're going to do for row number four, very easy. It's pretty much all just one single crochet into every single stitch. Now this chain one at the beginning doesn't really count as anything. So we're going to go back into that same stitch and we're going to single crochet here. Then we're going to go into the next stitch and single crochet. And I'm working over those tails there. So I'm going to keep going until I hit my chain twos. So another one. And then I have another stitch there. So I have one, two, three, four. So I should have five here. So I'm hitting five. And now I've got these two rows that had the chain two. So we are going to do a spiked single crochet stitch. And you might be thinking, what the heck is a spiked stitch? So I'm going to show you. So instead of, you know, going into the next stitch, which would be the chain or even the chain space, we're going to actually reach down two rows below. So instead of going into this space, instead of going into the one below that, we are going to find, remember those two skipped stitches? We're going to go into the first of those. So I'm going to go all the way down here. I'm going to insert my hook into that first stitch. And I am going to pull up a loop. So I'm going to grab the hook there and pull up a loop. Now what I want to do is I want to pull it up so that it reaches the same height as the current row I'm working on. See how that yarn is coming up like that? that is the spiked effect. So that's why it's called a spiked single crochet stitch. Some people just simply call it a spike stitch. And so once you've pulled it up like that, then you can yarn over and pull your yarn through and there you have it. And so what that does is the color, the contrasting color creates a nice uniformity there to frame out our diamond. So we're going to do the same thing in the next skip stitch that we have there. So we're going to reach all the way down and then pull up a loop. Now some people might not necessarily want to pull it up, like some people actually just like to keep it a little bit more scrunched in and then single crochet. That's totally a personal preference. Um, you'll find that this is already kind of bubbling. It will create it kind of bubbling a bit more, but that is nothing that, you know, a bit of blocking won't solve. So if that doesn't bother you at all and you like the look of it being a little bit more crunched down, so I crunched down that second one a little bit more. Um, then that's totally up to you. So you can see, it. so if I just look at it from here, it looks like a little fishtail. Okay, so now let's go on. I'm gonna do, whoops, I gotta have to sew that in. Actually, I can just snip that one right there. Okay, so I'll do a few more with you just so you can see the full effect. So now we're working into regular stitches. So make sure you don't skip that first one here. So that's it. So that's a single crochet. So you're going to single crochet one into every single stitch. So just remember that in between these two spike stitches, you're going to have to have 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five is my starting. And I should end up with five on the other end as well. So we have the second one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, and then the next two, there we go, there's the chain stitch. So see how, there we go, now you can see it's fully gone around. So now we're going to do our spiked stitch, so we're going to go all the way down there, insert our hook, and pull it up and single crochet. Then into the next stitch right there, pull up a loop and single crochet. There we go. Love these colors together.
Okay, so you're just going to basically do that all the way to the end of your row. That's going to be the end of row number four, but our stitch does not end there. So this is the basic idea. We've got another few more rows to go before the repeat starts again. So just finish your single crochets and I'll meet up with you at the end of this row. Okay, so I've completed row number four. And so now you can see how the diamond shape is framed in. And we are going to, again, snip off our yarn. So see, this is why you're not gonna need as much of the accent color, because we're really only ever using it for the single crochet rows. Okay, so you're just going to snip, okay. Okay, so we're gonna move on to row number five, and we're gonna bring back our main color. So again, I look for the part where I ended or the side where I ended, so I ended here. So I'm actually gonna flip that over and that is where I'm gonna begin. So I'm gonna insert my hook there and I'm gonna pull my yarn through. And I'm going to chain one, okay? And then we're gonna go back into that same stitch and we're gonna single crochet. So we're gonna begin by creating a full diamond shape for this section. But there's something gonna be a little bit different about the diamond at the beginning and at the end. And that has to do with the fact that we had those chain twos. Now in the first section, we had one, two, three, four sections of chain twos. But because we're gonna stagger these diamonds, you're actually only gonna have one, two, three sections of chain twos, because remember the chain two spaces are now gonna fall, as you'll see, they're gonna fall in the center of the full um, diamond shape. So that means we're gonna have two extra stitches. So at the beginning, we're gonna place two single crochets instead of just one. So we're gonna do a second one here, just for this first diamond, okay, of the second section. So we have two single crochets and now we proceed as usual. A half double, I'm gonna work over those tails as usual. Then two doubles. One and two. And then we have our two triples and they should be falling exactly right there over the two spike stitches. So that's how you can kind of mark the center of your diamond shapes. So we'll yarn over twice into the first spike stitch. We triple crochet and then yarn over again, second spike stitch into the triple crochet, okay? And then we go back to doing two doubles because we're going down the other side of the diamond. And then the next one is also a double. And then we have a half double. And then we have a single. Okay, so just at the beginning here, we had two single stitches, single crochets. And so that just helps to make sure that our diamond shape sits right centered, snuggled in between the two. And then when we do our chain two, it should fall right over where those two triple crochets were two rows below. So we skip these two stitches into the next stitch. We start with a single crochet and now we're just as usual, only one single crochet, then a half double and two doubles, etc., etc. Okay, so this guarantees that every time you do two triples, it's going to fall over the spike stitch. Every time you do two chain stitches, it should fall over these two triple crochets. So just continue with that pattern all the way to the end. And I'm going to meet up with you at the end. And at the end, you should have one extra stitch left. And that's where we're going to place that extra single crochet. So we added a single crochet at the beginning and we're gonna do another one at the end. So go ahead and finish row number five and I'll meet you there in a bit. Okay, so I just finished the last diamond here and of course I've got one extra stitch so I'm gonna place that extra single crochet right there. 
So this maintains my stitch count throughout the whole thing here. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, so of course now we have to continue to build up the other side of this diamond. So if you look at it this way, so the diamond, so this is really why they call it the diamond because it's, if you look at it from this side, this is where the diamond shape comes from. This looks to me more like a honeycomb, but that's just me. Okay, so we're still with the main color and we're gonna go into row number six. So you're just gonna chain one and turn your work. And again, this is where you're just gonna replicate what you did in the first row of creating the diamond shape. So we're just simply going to replicate what we see. So we just did a single crochet, so we're gonna single crochet. And there's two, remember there's two single crochets at the beginning and end of this row. And now we're gonna go on to a half double. And then our double and double, etc. So that's what I mean by you're gonna get really, really good and familiar with all of your stitches at the end of this project. Okay, so there you go. Now you can see that the diamond's really taking shape. So that's what we're gonna do for row number six. So do that all the way to the end and I'll meet you right here. Okay, so I have completed row number six. So you can see that your work is looking like this. And I'm just gonna snip my yarn. And I just realized a little something here. So you can see how when we did the first row, because we did the chain and then we did the single crochets, that that outline is very prominent. And then of course we did two rows of our diamond shape and then we did one row of our single crochets. Now it's fine just like this, but you can see that one row gets a little bit lost with the contrasting color. So in fact, in the project that I had done before, I realized now that I had actually used two rows and that really solidifies the division between the diamonds. So as we snip off our yarn here, I'm gonna bring back the contrasting color, okay? I'm gonna bring back, I'm gonna bring back our accent color and this time I'm gonna show you the effect of how it would look with two rows of single crochets. So we're gonna go on to row number seven. So again, I'm gonna turn my work, I'm gonna insert my hook, and I'm gonna pull up a loop. Okay, and then I'm gonna chain one. And so we're going to single crochet across So I'm gonna single crochet right into that first one. And then you just keep single crocheting until you hit that first set of chain twos, okay? And that's where we're gonna do our spike stitch. So this is basically a repeat now of row number four. So you're just gonna keep going this is gonna help us really accentuate the shape. And that's why it's so important with this stitch that you do need two colors, at least. Okay, and so you're going to continue on. I'm almost there. Another single crochet, single crochet, and single. Okay, so I've got my, my chain two in this row, my chain two in the next row, so I'm gonna skip all the way down. So now it's gonna be really easy you just skip down to the last row that had the accent color and you find those two stitches there and you're gonna insert, pull up and single crochet. Go back into the next stitch and spike stitch. Just like that, okay? So it's really connecting that accent color. So you know what to do. This is a repeat of row number four. Go all the way to the end, but don't snip your yarn. I'm gonna meet you there. Okay, so I've completed row number seven and my work is looking like this. So you can continue on and this will be the repeat for this stitch, okay? So once you've completed that accent row, 
you would then come back, you would snip your yarn, and then we would start all over again from row number two. So you have row two, row three, row four, row five, row six, and row seven, and then you would start all over again. So you're repeating from rows two to seven until you reach the height uh, or the length of the project that you would like to do. So that is the diamond stitch, or what I like to affectionately call the honeycomb stitch. So I, I hope you guys found that super easy. If you have any questions, please do feel free to leave them for me in the comment box down below. I do know, just a little note, that sometimes in another project that I've done, and you guys will notice this in the uh, movie night blanket because this is where uh, these colors are going to be used again. You'll notice, uh, you probably have already seen that video. But in that project, I actually do two rows of single crochets in between just to really solidify the separation between the main color. That is totally an optional thing uh, that you can do. You don't have to. The repeat is just like this. Uh, but again, if you would like your divisions to see, so the back here kind of gets a little bit lost. But if you would like your divisions to be a little bit clearer, then you can do a second row of just single crochet stitches. Now, of course, you won't need to do the spike stitch the second time around. Okay, guys, and here we are. I have completed five sectioned rows. So I've got one two, three, four, five. So I just wanted to do a few more of these rows to give you the full effect of this honeycomb stitch. So see, for me, it looks more honeycomb this way, but when you turn it this way, now you can definitely see the diamond design. So I hope you found that easier than you thought it was going to be. Isn't that pretty? So this is actually gonna be part of another project that you're gonna see in a little while. But in the meantime, I'm curious to see what you guys are gonna use your honeycomb stitch for. Leave me a comment in the comment box down below and let me know what you're gonna do with your stitch. And it might be the same thing that I have in store for my stitch coming up soon. Now, don't forget, if you haven't seen my movie night blanket, where I also do use this stitch for that blanket, I'll leave a link for that in the description box down below and you can check that out and see how I made quite a large item with this stitch. And that's it, that's all. So if you have any questions, as always, you know, leave it for me in the comment box down below or email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. You guys know I love hearing from you. Don't forget, visit me on the website, crochetcrafty.com and sign up for my monthly newsletter. You get all kinds of free goodies and there's lots to explore on the website. So go check that out. Don't forget to come say hi to me. I'm on the socials at Facebook and Instagram at The Stitch Sessions. And by the way, if you're new here and, and you liked this tutorial, make sure to press that subscribe button. Come hang out with me every Wednesday morning when I upload a brand new video. And if you like stitch tutorials, Make sure to also give me a thumbs up because that way I'll know to continue bringing more of these types of tutorials mixed in with some of our project tutorials as well. So for now, guys, I hope you have a wonderful time crocheting up your honeycomb stitch. Take good care of yourselves. I will see you guys in next week's session. Take care.